to be with you, but uh, uh, I could not uh, do it this year. So I scheduled a patient, a young patient, who had a previous laparoscopy six months ago, and the surgeon found a big rectovaginal nodule, and he stopped the surgery, and uh, he referred me uh, the patient, who, who is very painful, as uh, my colleague uh, told you. And she has a big endometriosis nodule here, which is deep because uh, we can see only the tip of the, uh, only the tip of the lesion, but there is a big piece of three centimeter into the vagina. I will put a finger into the vagina and you will see what has happened here. So here is a big three centimeter nodule and we will see once we open the vagina that uh, we, have, we have a big piece to remove. And uh, then the nodule goes uh, laterally into the parametrium below the ureter. And here we have to uh, take care to carry out a nerve sparing uh, procedure in order to avoid uh, uh, bladder dysfunction and sexual dysfunction. And we'll speak more uh, about this uh, Friday, uh, Friday afternoon when I have a talk about the nerve sparing. And uh, then we have some uh, small lesions uh, on the broad ligaments, you see here and there, along with a lesion of the vesico, uh, uh, vesico uterine uh, cul-de-sac and the round uh, ligament. So just a moment, uh, ils ont demandé si on peut augmenter la, le débit. Okay. So, we... Huh? Ah, bon, on va faire comme ça, alors. Uh, do you have a fluent, uh, fluent view? Is the, is the movie okay for you? <coughs> is, the is the movie okay for you? The quality you. is okay? <laughs> Uh, Horace, the view is very nice. You can go on. Okay, very well. So, we will start by uh, dissecting the both ureters. First, the left one, which is uh, farther from, uh, it is farther from the nodule. But as we have to treat uh, the broad ligament, it is better to identify the ureter and to preserve it and to avoid any ureteral uh, fistula. So I pick up the peritoneum covering the ureter and we'll dissect it farther and farther below, uh, below the um, uh, ovary. Uh, I forgot to tell you that uh, I am not uh, alone in this surgery. I am helped by uh, two very nice guys. One uh, on my uh, right is Dr. Jamil Marabha from uh, Jordan. And the second assistant is a guy, a very nice guy you may uh, know because uh, he is trained in Istanbul in the department of uh, Professor Ayas. His name is uh, Ahmed Namazov. It's a very nice guy. My, now he he's here. I cannot uh, tell anything that then uh, he's a very nice guy. But uh, actually, <coughs> actually, it's a very a very good surgeon, and uh, I am very happy to have him uh, here in uh, Bordeaux for one year. So now we we'll remove uh, this this piece of the uh, peritoneum, and the uh, Jamil will take care on the on the ureter. So we carried out uh, the tubal patency. The both fallopian tubes are okay, so uh, the patient can be pregnant naturally. So she does not need in the future to have uh, an IVF, except it if she has over, uh, over uh, infertile factors which uh, are unknown uh, today. 
So to carry out the surgery, I hesitated between uh, taking the plasma jet or the harmonic scalpel or the um, or the um, uh, Thunderbeat. And uh, ultimately, I choose the harmonic scalpel because uh, because of the patient conformation. So she has uh, some uh, fat tissue, uh, and uh, plasma jet uh, produce a lot of smoke. Ju just a moment, uh, Jamil. Produce a lot of smoke on fat tissue. So I uh, decided to take the uh, harmonic scalpel. But but the free instruments or uh, uh, it is not clear the view, Jamil. Just a moment, excuse us, excuse us, we'll clean. Okay. Now we'll do the same, uh, the same uh, dissection on the right side, where the ureter is much closer from, um, from the nodule. So the ureter is uh, here, let, let me show the ureter. So the ureter is here, you see. It is there. So I pull up the peritoneum and I increase the distance with the ureter and then I incise on the direction of the ureter. And each time I have a look that the ureter stays far. It is here, you see very, it very well. And then I used to ask to Jamil to put the instrument to the ureter. So as you know, as you see, I, I cut very, very superficially the peritoneum because I try to avoid the injury, thermal injury of uh, hypogastric nerves. Hypogastric nerves are very, is, it is very easy to find on the left side, while on the right side it must be it must be here. I saw, I saw it uh, before uh, starting. It must be here in this, uh, in this fat tissue. Uh, it must be here. I think it, I think it is here. So I, I cut only superficially in order to avoid any injury. Now, if you cut the hypogastric uh, nerve, you won't have a you won't have a, a bladder dysfunction uh, because the patient will be able to avoid the bladder, but uh, there are some uh, troubles of the, of the sensitivity of the bladder. Hold it like this. And this may, uh, may uh, lead to bladder dysfunction in the long run. Now, I, I told you that I want to carry out a disc excision, so I will I will take the peritoneum from here and I will incise it along to the rectal wall. And I will take a contact with the rectal wall at the rectovaginal space in order to be able to clean the rectal wall and to make it suitable for a disc excision. So Last year, I, uh, I did a disc excision like this. So the procedure is somehow similar, and uh, we are carrying out uh, in our department uh, 100 a year uh, rectal disc excisions. Yes, clean slowly. OK. Very well. So you see the, the rectum is here, here. This is the rectum. So I have to go closer to the rectum and to reach the rectovaginal space on the left side where it is not involved. So we tried always to start by dissecting the rectovaginal space on the side where it is less involved and where the anatomy is easy to recognize. Okay. To do this, we can use any instruments. Uh, I, I use either uh, the plasma jet or the uh, harmonic uh, scalpel or the Thunderbeat. But it is obvious that if you use an instrument which provides 
uh, kinetic energy ahead, you will find better the, I, I will just clean, uh, sorry. You will find much, much better um, the rectovaginal space. Okay, now I will ask Horace. Jamil. Yes. Horace, uh, you're going with a small bite, so uh, which? Sorry? Small bites. I don't understand. Uh, sorry, could you could you ask me once more? So yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna. There's a problem with the microphone. Uh, I change it. So you are going do, doing the surgery with small bites, which uh, uh, you it gives you to the to block this area, right? So oh, okay. very small bites. Oh, and, you yeah. want you want to like uh, you want you to like comment on that, please? Uh, okay. So. Yes. So here you see we are reaching the rectovaginal space here. And we'll go progressively in the front of the rectum. So here the rectum is here. Now if I cut like this, I will completely release the rectum. But I want to do it laterally on the other side to make sure that if I cut here, I don't injure the rectum itself. So I will ask to Jamil to take the rectum, to pull it cranially, and I will open the rectum here. And I will go progressively to the rectovaginal space. But, but I keep on mind that the nodule is larger on the, is more, uh, extensive on the right side and uh, it is very likely that here I, I have to cut into the nodule in order to release the rectum. So here is the lateral rectal wall, you see white. So I continue to, to section the fat tissue. Like this. Oh, I have a small bleed. Salondan soru sormak isteyen varsa sorabiliriz. Bu arada. Like this. So here we are on the other side of the rectum. So the rectum is here. I will just finish the... No, no, no. no you, you block my uh, view. So I just finished the, accomplished the hemostasis because I cut a small vessel. Okay. So the rectum is here, and now I will start, come closer a bit. I will start releasing in the front. And I know very well that the rectum is infiltrating or on three or four centimeter length. So it is actually a big module we'll, we'll try to remove by disc excision. Uh, Horace, we are discussing with Bulent, and now the the question is, why don't you go with the the, the sides that you open on the, on the lateral side uh, on each, and you open first the lateral side, to 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 to, to preserve the nerve, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, I want to preserve the nerve, so I uh, to to release the rectum. I always go on contact with the rectum. And once the rectum is released, I will Just attack the parametrium. Because then the nerves are here. And uh, actually, I think we have, uh, in, in our department, we have a, a low, low, a pretty low rate of uh, bladder dysfunction, meaning bladder dysfunction, uh, any uh, post-voiding bladder uh, volume superior to 100 milliliter because we take care to uh, to preserve uh, the nerves the nerves plunging nerves are located below the ureter so but keeping the keeping the um, dissection on the close to the rectum 
we completely avoid to injure them, and then once the rectum is released, we can attack the parametrium and to dissect progressively. So here I have my finger. My finger is here, but actually you have a very, very big, big, big nodule. So I will start to release the rectum like this. So here is my finger. So I work with only one hand. And all the time I go, uh, Jamil, you take this and you do not longer leave it, okay? Come closer. So I always go on the lateral side to, to remove the fat tissue to see where is the rectal wall and on the other side too. Horst, the instrument you're using is harmonic. As it, this is the, this, this tip is the, I think it's the first time. This is a new one. I mean, the tip of the, the yes, uh, harmonic. Yes, this is the new one. This is yep, new okay. one. It is more expensive. And uh, I think it is one, 150 euros more expensive. But yeah, I but it's working know. as an as an as a dissect. I said dissection is easier with this the yeah. tip of this instrument, it, huh? It is, it is sharper, and uh, yeah. this, this helps me to dissect Sorry. to dissect uh, in in these cases. How is the effect of how is the effectiveness of uh, this type of instrument to to uh, I mean to clamp the vessels? I mean, how many I, I, I uh, think do you it's know? Very similar with with uh, similar with the okay. previous one. I don't think uh, even even though uh, uh, they told me it works better, I'm not very sure, or uh, the difference is not uh, obvious. Uh, it's not relevant for me. But the dissection is uh, is uh, much uh, is much uh, much precise, more precise. Yandan değil, yeah. Clean, yandan. my friend, please, because I think we completely released the completely released the rectum, so the nodule is here. And here I have the rectovaginal space. You see, the rectovaginal space is here. Mm -hmm. So now I have just to move progressively toward the midline and to completely release the rectum. But here the rectum is completely safe. You see? So uh, Horace, uh, the most of the surgeons, including us, me and Bülent also, and, and the other, uh, the, the most of surgeons go in this area, uh, coming from the, the lateral side, I mean the right and left side. You uh, went directly uh, in, the, in the middle of the, uh, or the, the area. So uh, this is, uh, what do you think about that? You, could you comment on that? This is your technique, of course. It's wonderful. Yeah, we are watching very... But it, it is my technique once uh, I uh, okay. have done uh, several hundred, <laughs> honestly. So uh, a <laughs> uh, long time I was going on the lateral side and now I, I, keep on, I keep an eye on the lateral side and I try not to go farther on the midline than on the lateral side. So each time I cut uh -huh. here, I have already done it laterally and I have a look on the lateral side. So I think it 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 not be prudent to cut only on the midline, and it is much more mm -hmm. safe to do uh, from the lateral side, as you uh, as you emphasized. Um, so my advice is to do it from the lateral side, and once the lateral side the progressed, you can cut on the mid midline. So this is the nodule, okay. And uh, here we have. Uh, we do not need to dissect more because uh, we are more likely to cut some nerves here. So the rectum, we leave the rectum and we will come back at the end to remove uh, the disc excision. So the disc excision is absolutely feasible in this case because the length is a bit more than three centimeter. Because as the, beagle is, as the nodule is big, the length is not this. This is just the diameter. The length will be a bit larger because the mucosa is pushed, uh, is pushed inside. Okay, now let's see what we can do on the 
vagina because the vagina has a big infiltration. It's a big nodule you see here. Yeah, it's a big nodule of the vagina. The cervix is here. And the patient has is very painful during the sexual intercarsis. So to remove the vaginal infiltration, I always start by uh, the less involved part of the vagina. Sacro uterinlerin e, kurudu yani. Meaning this Aslında one. biraz önce e, Cem'in söyledi, söylediğini şey yaptı yani. Ha, değil mi? And I push the finger in order to understand which is the lateral limit of the vaginal infiltration. Until uh, last week, in very big nodules like this, I used to carry out a first vaginal step. And uh, I carried out more than 80 procedures like this. But the vaginal steps, step was always done with, uh, with a short endoscope. And uh, that I uh, and I had this endoscope in uh, Rouen. I do not have it in uh, Bordeaux. Oh, so uh, I uh, stopped doing uh, the vaginal approach. But I use uh, all my knowledge. Um, all my all my no yeah clean. All my knowledge uh, provided to the vaginal approach to do it with my finger. So always I use a finger into the vagina and I... Now your finger is in... only one hand. Horace, did, did I understand well that your finger is in, in vagina, right? Yes. Look at yeah, one you... Uh, uh, so, so I use so only I use. my uh, left hand, but just for this step of dissecting, uh, of dissecting the, the vagina. Because it allows me to, to see where is the limit of the infiltration? So here I, I feel that it is okay. Maybe here I have something. Yeah, here. Okay, this is my finger. Okay, I will remove it because now it is okay. I change my glove and you will see my mm -hmm. instrument will arrive on the left side of the patient. No, it's okay. Le let it down. So look at the look at the size of the vaginal infiltration. Here it is a very, very, very big one. So I scheduled for you a nice rectovaginal nodule. Because I think in, it is just in these cases we can discuss uh, different approaches. I can tell you how I'm doing, and you can tell me how are you doing, and we can, comp we can compare our knowledge and we can share our knowledge. So I think that for the life surgery it's very useful to schedule very difficult cases. Um, but uh, let it down. I think it is of major importance to perform several cases uh, in your own uh, hospital, in your own departer, department, because uh, there are patients who had a preoperative consultation with the surgeon, where uh, the plan of the surgery has been discussed with the surgeon, and uh, if there are complication, uh, any complications, the, surgeons, the surgeon will uh, manage them uh, himself. And, uh, and I think it's much better than uh, carrying out the surgery elsewhere and uh, leaving behind uh, patients with complications. So as now we can uh, broadcast in very high quality the surgery everywhere in the world, I think that uh, it is uh, very safe and wise to privilege the life surgeries uh, broadcasted from the department of uh, the surgeon. 
it does not uh, it does not uh, avoid to surgeons to go then to the Congress so uh, without uh, my uh, the problem I have tomorrow I would have uh, taken a fly uh, this afternoon to come to see you uh, tomorrow so it is actually feasible but I think that the life surgery is interesting if the case is if, if the case is difficult if the case is challenging and if the surgeon can do the best job in his uh, department yeah uh, no no photo no thanks so we have a very big hole into the vagina and we'll close it a bit later so the vaginal the vaginal part is completed huh yeah it is completely completely open no risley on the right side and left side no nothing huh yeah okay i am from left side to the right side like this hold hold this now we have some endometriosis could you uh, Horace, could you could you show us the the healthy healthy the border of the right and left side that how yeah. you how uh, you sure that that the, you removed all the nodule and the healthy side which is the i mean the appearance of the healthy tissue because could you explain that I, to the I audience touched, please i touched before so here here is is normal tissue here it is not it's very strange to be a normal tissue but i think it is normal i wonder if uh, it is the scar of the precedent precedent surgery no no there is a, no there is a small cyst inside you're very right there is a small cyst inside okay and on the other side here it is normal no maybe we can i uh, can remove this too so i put a finger into the vagina to see uh, to see then if everything is okay each time we you cut you have to have you have to uh, to take a look at the tissue or the color of the tissue you leave and if you have a small cyst inside a small black cyst it is very likely that uh, that the tissue is not uh, clean and you have to remove it a bit more now here here i have endometriosis and the endometriosis goes into the parametrium so I, I will just release a bit more the vagina to be able to close it in order to avoid the loss of, uh, of yes. neumoperitoneum and then I will remove it from the parametrium uh, just two fill pour un. I will put just a, just a stitch here <coughs> to close the vagina now the question is what is this because this looks like a nodule I will remove it I think it looks like a nodule of the torus uh, it's so I will remove this because it is not into the cervix the cervix is uh, let, let me see uh, Jamil Sh show me the abdominal wall Sorry. Okay. So the now let let it down. So the cervix is here. The cervix is here. It means that this it is an abnormal tissue. I think it's what we are calling the nodule of the torus uterine torus so in fact it is rather uh, adenomyosis and i will cut it gently and not to dig too much in order to avoid to to render the cervix fragile because the patient is newly para and she intends to have uh, children later No, this is the torus. This is the part of the of the uterus. You see the uterus is here. It's the part of the uterus. Okay. Now Jamil, you have to we have to improve the quality of the view because uh, 
Okay. So let's put everything inside. I will put just a stitch to to avoid the loss of no peritoneum, and then I will close at the end once I remove the lesion from the parametrium. I will wash the endoscope, and now you have back a nice view. So I put a stitch, I use a uh, Vicryl to close the vagina. Uh, I have used a lot, se several, several uh, threads, uh, Vicryl, Monocryl. I don't know which is better because uh, with each one I have... Uh, because with... Oh, sorry. Because with each one, each one I have, uh, I had uh, some fistulas. So in my experience, I had to deal with almost 40, uh, maybe less, fistulas, rectovaginal or uh, leakages. Because uh, today I count... Uh, maybe 1,030 procedures on a colon rectum. And uh, as the rate of fistula is about uh, 3%, I am between uh, 35 and 40 fistulas in my experience. And uh, mm. I had this fistula with all the devices possible and uh, with all the kind of sutures performed on the vagina. I think that the risk of the fistula is actually multifactorial. It depends on the energy to you, you use to dissect, but also uh, on the simultaneous, on the, on the size of the, of the patch and of the nodule. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't need another one. I, I will put another one, but this is not the the real suture. It's just to close. Uh, I put another one because. Uh, but I will come back to to close uh, uh, correctly. Uh, it, it's turned into my uh, needle ho holder. Or is what will be the next step? You're going to go with the, the uh, parametrial re resection or the bowel resection? The, pa the parametrium. I will remove right. the parametrium. I will dissect the parametrium. And we'll carry out the nerve sparing. And this can uh, start the discussion we'll have uh, within two days when I uh, will give the lecture about the nerve sparing. So the nerve sparing is a uh, is an approach which was first described in cancer and uh, in the literature there are more than 200 papers about uh, nerve sparing but 150 of them more than 150 more than three cards concerns the total radical hysterectomy and uh, it is logical because, uh, in my opinion, you can perform uh, nerve sparing only when, hold this please, uh, bipolar, only when the nerves are not involved by the disease. And this is the case in the cancer because when you carry out a Wertheim procedure, the nerves are never involved. Because when the nerves are involved, there is no longer indication for uh, a surgery, there was rather, rather radiotherapy or curie therapy. Well, in endometriosis, there is a very, very different situation because the splanchnic nerves may be involved by the disease when uh, the nodules involve the parametrium. And in this case, 
you cannot cut section the nodule and uh, save the nerves because the nodule is very very hard and uh, you can just uh, take the decision to remove or not to remove the endometriosis so i speak about the very very large nodule of the parametrium nodule going down to sacral roots okay but it is very useful to know that the where the nerves are located so the nerves are here below below the ureter in this size here we have also some nerves but the nerves going running to the bladder are located usually at the level of the ureter so it is yeah and this may be the hypogastric nerve so it is very interesting to dissect them longitudinally it is very interesting to coagulate as less as, po as possible and to remove only only uh, proved endometriosis lesions and not all the all the fibrosis and if you remove a parametrium down to sacral roots I think you have to be very, very cautious on the other side. So here, as you see, the nodule is here, is, it goes down, so I will separate the uterosacral ligament from all the nerves are located at the exterior, meaning that I won't go, uh, let, let it down, I won't go below the ureter because uh, first I don't need here is very is, is completely is completely safe sure. and yeah. I will so cut here also. I will pull the endometriosis here and I will try to clean all the normal tissue and to remove only the only the, um, uh, the involved tissue so three years ago I wrote a paper in uh, seminars of reproductive medicine and uh, the article was uh, between the nurse pairing uh, between the optimism of the willing and uh, well I forgot the name I forgot the, <laughs> the name of the article but uh, I, I discussed that of course, we'll try to do a nerve sparing, and uh, we, we think uh, that uh, it is feasible in most of cases. But in some cases, when we have very large nodule to treat, we, we have to accept that the nerve sparing is not possible, uh, at least on one side. And uh, in this case, it's better to remove and to sacrifice uh, the nerves on one side, but to preserve them on the other side and, f and to, to tell clearly to the patient that if within 10 years she has another, uh, another uh, surgery planned by someone else, uh, the surgeon should carefully read your operative report and uh, do not remove widely the con the contralateral parametrium because it is very likely that the patient will present a very severe dysuria. So Horace, at this moment, could you show us the, the trace of the uh, hypogastric nerve on the right? On the right, on as the we right, see, I suppose, I, yeah. I, I, would, I would expect that the hypogastric nerve be some somehow somewhere here and not here here we are, we are very close to the or maybe here may, maybe there it may be this one. It, it may be this maybe yeah. there is this one i think it is this one it's yeah. going directly to in to the nodule right yeah that's why if if it goes into the okay, you have it, it's better it's better to sacrifice but in this case we'll keep 
will uh, conservate it on the oversight. It is here. We see, we see it mm -hmm. very, very well here. On the oversight, we do not need to remove uh, much better. Yeah, I will clean. I will clean the endoscope because uh, you're losing the quality. Uh, I will wash inside. It's much better. Okay. I want to get rid of you. Okay. So here you see you, you have you have several nerves, and uh, I started using uh, uh, I, I tested last two two weeks ago a very interesting system of uh, uh, nerve monitoring, neuro monitoring, and uh, I intend to to have it for uh, routinely for my uh, surgeries on the parametrium. So I think that next year I can uh, demonstrate you how it how it used, and you can stimulate the nerves and to see if the bladder contracts or uh, relax. <coughs> it works very very well, and uh, the name is uh, what is the name? Ino Inomed Inomed. The name is Inomed. So, how it works in I mean during the operation you are stimulating the nerves something like that. Sorry. Don't no. Don't don't. Uh, sorry. Uh, no, no. I mean that the the, the 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 new instrument that you are talking about is a new thing. You said that to check the uh, the, yeah, the function of the nerve. Right? You just you just stimulate the nerves. You stimulate uh -huh. the nerves and you observe if there is a contraction of the of the so. bladder or of the anal sphincter. So the device includes uh, one uh, one uh, laparoscopic stimulator and then uh, uh, a pipe to be connected to the bladder catheter and uh, an over uh, an over device uh, to introduce into the rectum so i use it once but uh, it is it is very nice and uh, i i carried out a big nodule of the parametrium and the patient could void the bladder uh, very well and uh, I, I think it is very interesting to do it I think we, ha we have to we have to improve our uh, our uh, means to identify the nerves at least the nerves going to the bladder and to the vagina because uh, if we injure them, you may have uh, severe bladder dysfunction requiring self-catheterization, or you may have uh, vaginal dryness, which is very, very embarrassing for, uh, for the um, uh, sexual intercourse. Okay, clean, please. So here you see the, the nodule of the parametrium. So I pull it medially in order to increase the distance from the ureter and from the nerves running below the ureter and i will ask jamil to push the tissue like this to come closer and i will release it small, small progressively taking care to uh, uh, here we have a big vein here uh, i will coagulate it because it's a big vein um, you may also use a clip, but maybe I think the coagulation would be enough. We also no. have to try to coagulate not too much because the, even though the nerves are uh, preserved, uh, you can injure them using uh, the, the coagulation by the thermal effect. That's why I don't think Honestly, I don't think that nurse purring means dissecting completely the nurse because in this case I think we can uh, we can take the risk to injury them by simply coagulating vessels. So I I used to have a look at them to know they are when th where they are, and I dissect them only if they are actually in the plane of my uh, resection. Here we have another 
vessel. So uh, remove your instrument. So the ureter is here, and the splunging nerves are here. So they are more than one centimeter far from uh, my dissection plane. So I will continue to remove this. So here, here we are in a healthy plane. You see the the tissue is actually actually healthy. Here we have a vessel. Don't move. Okay, very well. Okay, remove. Move on. And now this is the part, the lateral part of the nodule on connection with the vagina. You see the vagina is here, so I think we we can cut it here because here will be the paravagina and here we are joining the we are joining the vagina so he, here is the paravagina but here we do not have we do not longer have a deep endometriosis because you see the tissue the tissue looks healthy okay let's finish with this soru var mı efendim soru varsa aktarabiliriz salondan yok <gülüyor> also you gonna take it out in the vaginal right sorry you gonna take it out by vaginally? Yes, right, yes by vagina. That's why I don't. It's open now. Yeah. On the right side is open. Close the vagina. All right. So it's a big. Yeah, you left it open to take it out. Clean. So it's a big piece of the. Of the parametrium. It joins the piece that. of the vagina. Okay, very well, Anteverse, my friend. Ahmed. Try to catch this. Hello, <laughs> Ahmed. Okay, now let's see. Here, here, I think everything is okay. I said that the problem is that when you try to go far, you will be closer and closer on contact bipolar with the splanchnic nerves. That's why it is important here to try not to coagulate too much there. I can coagulate here because I'm. Uh, on the lateral face of the vagina. <laughs> Horace, I remember the the case that you operated uh, last year in live surgery in the same yes. uh, congress. Yeah, it was also it was so uh, really beautiful, and so you did a fantastic surgery. I remember there was a nodule on the. Uh, this in the nurse sciatic or something like that on the yeah, upper. On the, on the Do you remember that? On the yeah, sacralus. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really, really fantastic. Yeah. And when I when I oh. scheduled this patient, first I uh, I uh, suspected the same uh, the same localization, but uh, then uh, this week when I uh, received the second MRI, I understood that it is la is it is less. So I will take care to do uh, a bigger one next year. <laughs> but uh, this is the most, which is the most important, is not the size, but what we have to do to remove it. And I think that this uh, case is also uh, demonstrative because uh, it, it allows to, uh, to dissect yeah. this parametrium and to preserve the, the hippo inferior hypogastric plexus, which is... Uh, which is here, here, all these fibers are related to the inferior hypogastric plexus and we can conservate it completely on the other side. So I think that this patient won't have any problem of uh, bladder uh, voiding. But I will keep you informed because as usual, I will, uh, I will, re I record the, the surgery and I will 
put it on uh, on YouTube on my YouTube so channel so you can see it uh, in full time with the comments with the questions uh, and uh, I will add every two days I will add uh, an update about uh, how the patient feels now we have to to close the vagina we can do it and I will take several uh, on peut mettre éventuellement un tocar de 10. Mettez mon un tocar de 10. I will put a trocar of 10 millimeters because I will have uh, I have several uh, I have s the question is if here we have endometriosis or not. Uh huh. It's a very small system. If sister. I see here, I I I think there is no endometriosis. I will put a finger. Very difficult to say because here, if you look at here, we are below the nodule. Honestly, I don't know. What do you think? Is it endometriosis or not? I because think. I think yes. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's very small, but it's cyst. I think. Yeah. It's a very small and. Uh, ho -ho yeah, it's very small. If we take it out, no harm. I mean, in terms of the length of the vagina, I think I think you, okay, I will you should take it. I thank you. <laughs> I will put a, a ten millimeter trocas and then I will remove it. Uh, hold, hold it. Horace, why don't you use uh, intercorporeal and continuous? The closure of the vagina, you are always using and separately an extra uh, corporeal. But because I think that if one of the stitches fails, it, everything, uh -huh. all the running suture may, uh, may open. So, but I, I, have no, uh, I have no arguments to say that it is better like this because uh, I told you I have uh, enough fistula to not to believe that I'm doing better uh, uh, than other colleagues. Huh? It's not possible. So then we'll remove uh, this nodule and at the end I will uh, clean the rectum, we'll dig into the rectum to render it feasible for a disc excision and I am sure we'll be on time with uh, with uh, this uh, surgery and I will keep you informed about uh, the evolution because uh, tomorrow we will remove the bladder catheter and uh, once the bladder catheter is removed we uh, routinely carry out uh, the bladder scan to see how how the bladder uh, voids. Um, last uh, Friday, we carried out uh, one of the most severe deep endometriosis of uh, sacra roots I have ever seen. Uh, but the surgery was not suitable for a life surgery because it took uh, uh, nine hours. Uh, there were several procedures, a low rectal dissection, and uh, the dissection of the sacral roots was very long, and it, it is not suitable for a uh, life surgery. But if you want to have a look, I put it both on uh, both on the YouTube channel and on the LinkedIn LinkedIn uh, on my LinkedIn account, because the the dissection the the end of the surgery is very interesting uh, from the anatomical point of view because we had to to shave uh, three sacral roots and to dissect completely the sciatic nerves laterally from the ilia, external iliac arteries. Uh, but once more, it is not a surgery that can be done in uh, in life or it can be done. Uh, in several, uh, for example, you can uh, give me the connection at uh, 9 o'clock, then uh, to come back at 11 o'clock and something like this. 
because the surgery is too long to, to be broadcasted. However, it is very interesting from an uh, anatomical and didactical point of, uh, point of view. Oh. So I think I have to put six or seven stitches. And, and this patient, this patient had a dysuria prior to the surgery. And uh, the dysuria was completely relieved by, by simply removing the nodule. So we, she is uh, in postoperative day uh, five, and she voids completely the, the bladder. And it, it was somehow unexpected because I was almost sure that she, she has, uh, she would have to do uh, self catheterization. And now I, I prepare a paper uh, to submit it probably in the Journal of Minimally Invasive Gynecology about uh, a series of uh, 70 patients, uh, 70 uh, patients uh, managed for uh, deep endometriosis involving the sacra roots and uh, we, which the follow-up is at least six months. And uh, the rate of dysuria one year after the surgery is uh, only uh, it's three patient out of uh, 40. It means it's, it's less than 10%. And the majority of patients had a dysuria prior the surgery, meaning that uh, we have to keep on mind when you carry out this kind of patients that uh, the surgery may induce the dysuria, but also it may relieve a dysuria when it exists before. But uh, I think the, the relief has some limits because in two patients where, who were under uh, self-catheterization because they could not, could not longer um, avoid the bladder, they could not, uh, we, we could not restore the, the um, bladder function. So I think that in deep endometriosis, this is a message I, I believe, in deep endometriosis it's always better to perform the surgery earlier than later. And, uh, what else did you check? I mean, all this in your study that you're preparing and the, in terms of the quality of life and with the wet, what, the, what else did you check? I mean, for example, did you check the, 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 the sexual scores and the others? Um, we we check the gastro we, we have to check the score we used to use so uh, we use a lot of uh, gastrointestinal scores because uh, the majority of our patients are managed for colorectal endometriosis so we use the CAS score the CAS constipation score the gastrointestinal quality of life index GICLI, and the LARS score the low anterior rectal resection syndrome and the Wexner for the incontinence. And uh, we, in this, in these 70 patients, we also ask them if they have some motor trouble or hypoesthesia or anesthesia or uh, sensitive troubles. So symptoms related uh, specifically to, to the nerves. And I have not uh, all the results uh, in my head, but, uh, but the, the results are uncourageous when the patients are, uh, are seen, uh, are seen uh, several months after the surgery. So I think that this kind of surgery warrants to be done, um, despite, uh, despite a significant rate of fistula because uh, uh, because uh, the patients had the fistula in 10% of cases because 80% also had a low in the rectal nodule. So there are patients more severe than, uh, than this one we carry out uh, today. So the, the surgery is challenging. Immediate complication may be uh, significant, but uh, when you see the patient uh, later, I think uh, the, in, in, my, in my experience, uh, the results are very positive. 
Now, of course, of course, does not mean that everybody is doing well, because uh, we also have a patient who kept the, he was actually not improved, he, ha he, he has the same pain uh, without nodule as she had uh, with the nodule, but in this case I think we have uh, some uh, very complex phenomena of uh, hypersensitivity which are very difficult to explain and very difficult to treat also um, and uh, sure. I think that this, this uh, evolution their chronic pain uh, it, it is uh, unavoidable in a small uh, percentage of our patients but to date I cannot, uh, I, I could not identify some factors which uh, <coughs> predict uh, which patient will, uh, will be painful after the surgery and which patient uh, won't be at all. But, yeah? Huh? Uh, uh, just just a moment, excuse me, because uh, my nurse asked me something about another patient. Yeah. Il faut, il faut que la... Oui, elle peut sortir, mais on la fait sortir sur les antibiotiques. Est-ce que les anesthésistes ont regardé les antibiotiques ben, C'est ça la question qu'il faut poser. Sinon, je peux la voir dans une heure. Uh, sorry, I'm back with you. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, encore oui. Because uh, I, there was a question about a patient uh, which is, uh, um, uh, let, let it down, uh, which is at the second floor. And I managed her uh, in emergency for, uh, for huge abscess of uh, voluminous endometriomas. So this is a complication which may happen in patients with big endometriomas and uh, far from more when they have uh, IVF or a routine uh, function of, uh, of ovaries. Okay, so I think, I think the vagina is completely closed. So we can move to the rectum. Huh? No, no, no. Okay. Let, let it down because I can cut it. I put a finger and I will see. I put a finger. Yeah, this is closed. It's closed. Everything is closed. And it is very soft. Very well. Now, I will ask do you, do you know. This is the guy uh, trained in Turkey. Um, so he will put into the. Donnez un manipulator rectal. So he'll put into the rectum a manipulator. And this manipulator will help me to see the thickness. This is the manipulator. Will help me to see the thickness of the rectal wall. Because to carry out to carry out a disc excision with the circular stapler, I have to prepare a soft and thin rectal wall. Because the circular stapler cannot close directly on the nodule. So you have to remove the nodule, you have to do a shaving. So to prepare the disc excision, you have to prepare the rectal wall, it is too, too thick here. And also you have to remove all the fat tissue surrounding the shaved area, like this, perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, you have to remove all the fat tissue because the stapler should close only on the rectal wall. So. I will take the scalpel in a hand and uh, 
I will uh, put it like this, my friend. You, uh, Jamie, you have to put it, yeah, like this. So this is the infiltration, you see. It's very thick. Hold, hold it. And now I will take a grasp and I will remove all the fat tissue on contact with the rectal wall. And once I will finish, I will call my colorectal surgeon. In fact, one, one of them, because uh, I have three colorectal surgeons available at any moment to help us, me and my colleague, because we are two, in our center, we are two surgeons, gynecology surgeons exclusively dedicated to the deep endometriosis. And we so Horace, yes, uh, Horace, uh, as I understood, uh, you are doing the uh, the bubble surgery alone. But if you had a problem, you are calling the colorectal surgery, but they, they are standby, right? Did I understand well? No, the colorectal surgeon in France performs all the sutures. So, in theory. I can cut the rectum, but it is estimated that if the rectum is uh, sutured by a colorectal surgeon, probably the patient has lower risk to have a fistula because the procedure is carried out by a person, uh, the, by a colleague which is trained in uh, performing the suture. So here you see, here I carry out a small injury of the of the musculosa so I have to I have to go farther in order to catch it into the stapler. So my colorectal surgeons are uh, are available for us but they do not assist us from the onset of the procedure. They come only when we call them because the rectum is prepared to be sutured. So to my knowledge, this is the this is the rule in majority of departments in France. So the surgery is done by the gynecologist. The suture is done by the colorectal surgeon. Clean. Okay. Yeah, here, 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 here. I have to go a bit far. So we have to remove all these vessels. If I if I leave them. Uh, uh, behind, um, they can uh, first they okay. can uh, be responsible okay. for rectal rage okay. because they can uh, be closed uh, in between okay. two okay. staples okay. and they can bleed. So we may uh, have uh, rectal rage, postoperative rectal rage, which are very natural. difficult to to manage and very uh, they render the patients on the team very anxious um, and second it seems that the fat tissue is more likely to have a necrosis and you may have a fistula so to reduce the fistula and the rectorage we prefer to remove all this fat tissue before closing the stapler okay let me come here. This is fat tissue. You see the, the, the rectum is here. I see it here. No, don't, don't move uh, I, because I see very well now. I'm preparing a paper for the Journal of Minimal Invasive Gynecology. Uh, it's a video article, uh, disc excision in 10 steps. And uh, I identified 10 steps. In my opinion, they are mandatory to have a good disc excision. So the first one is releasing the rectum. Second one is 
performing the shaving performing the shaving the third one removing the fat tissue the fourth one is putting a stitch then pushing the circular stapler closing the circular stapler removing the disc adding uh, putting an additional uh, performing an additional stitch and then the test bubble test so I, I will try to to emphasize each one during this surgery so here we are on the first step which is the preparation of the um, I, I, I want to clean a bit more it is less less clear because we are working into the fat tissue uh, perfect. Ultracision. So here, the rectal wall is here. You see it very well. The rectal wall is here. So I put the 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 harmonic scalpel. You know, they have uh, it has two two um, two bleed. The white one is the pad, which is not uh, which is not uh, hot. The second one is the blade, which is hot. So always think to put the pad against the tissue you want to preserve, in order to avoid the the dispersion of the of the heat. You see that this is the the rectal wall. This is the step I like. I don't like too much because it is very annoying. But it is mandatory. Absolutely mandatory. And uh, we, we received a lot of people coming uh, to see us uh, performing uh, disc excision, and most of them uh, actually tried to do it uh, in their uh, in their units. And from while to while, they told me, "Oh, it does not work." And uh, in the majority of cases, I think the the problem was that the shaving was not enough and the the removal of the fat tissue was not uh, correctly done because it is annoying and because at any moment you can feel that it is okay we can we can go forward so i always try to to hit not not to hit too much the the tissue and here we are I think we completely turn around the the nodule so the nodule is here well, let, let it down we can let it down so the nodule is here very well uh, we have some fat tissue here let me see where is the rectum, my friend? Put it in the put it in the middle like this, yeah, like this. Okay, so I have some fat tissue here. Okay. Horus, Horus, yes. hear me? Yes, I Yo, at this moment, is there any probe or not? Is there anything in the in the rectum now? No. Yes, yes, I I, I put the rectal probe. Rect a rectal probe. Rectal I, uh, probe. I showed you mm -hmm. right. previously. Uh -huh. It is a uh, it is a disposable rectal probe. Uh, but you can uh, you can put uh, anything you you want. 
but you you have to feel. Okay. You have to feel very well the the rectum. So here, and you have to see the the thickness. You see, we it is obvious that the rectum is thickened here because the rectal probe is here and this thickness is not it's completely abnormal hold it please no 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 here the rectum always the rectum my friend hold it and now i i'm almost finished this quarter is extremely abject yeah huh? okay now here we have we have the rectum uh, i will clean i, I will just clean uh, with uh, because it's very important to to understand what is happened okay now here is the rectum the okay if the proof and here is the nodule i won't be able to remove this with the circular stepper the circular stepper cannot close so I have to remove all this this thickness with something with plasma with uh, scissors with anything else and I will use the harmony scalpel and I will try to follow the rectal wall like this So I think this is the 294th patient I managed by disc excision. So I think that, that the technique is now very standardized. And I told you that with my colleague, with Benjamin, we are carrying out 100 a year in Bordeaux. And actually... This is a very, very standardized technique. And if you do it like this, in my opinion, you cannot, you cannot fail. And the, the interest of the disc excision instead of the colorectal resection is obvious for the reduction of uh, functional troubles. So I think that carrying out a disc excision instead of a colorectal resection won't actually reduce the risk of fistula because in both cases you have a suture and the suture can uh, can lead to a fistula 100 what no here one 100 a year the the 100 a year disc excision i said it's not uh, it's, it's the real Clean. Okay. So you see, I continue to follow the rectal wall. You see, here is the proof. And you see that once we remove this, the rectal wall becomes soft. So I said that the risk of fistula is very likely similar between uh, disc excision and segmental resection but i think that the patients with uh, in in low nodule the patients with disc excision are more likely to have a normal bowel movements than the patients with low colorectal resection and uh, i'm sure because we we have just finished a, uh, a study comparing for the low rectum I think that disc excision is less interesting, less uh, mandatory in uh, nodules of the upper rectum or the sigmoid colon. Because in this case, uh, the risk of low anterior resection syndrome and the risk of uh, digestive troubles is, sure, is less. Correct. So uh, the, the colorectal resection does as well as disc excision. And uh, I uh, observed it in my mm -hmm. randomized trial, in endo-randomized <coughs> trial, which was the unique trial comparing, after randomization, disc excision and shaving to uh, colorectal resection. 
<coughs> and I was surprised to see that the functional outcomes were not very different between uh, uh, conservative surgery and uh, radical surgery and uh, the explanation was uh, that uh, there were numerous n there were numerous there were numerous patients with uh, upper rectal nodule Appelez Monsieur Mann, s'il vous plaît. So, here I prepared the rectum, and you see it, it is soft now. And the next step will be to put a stitch here at the inferior limit and another on the superior limit in order to be able <coughs> to pull this shaved area into, to push the shaved area into the stapler. So, I will put the stitch. No, I may not put the key alone. Après, c'est lui qui est dispo. So, they asked me who is the general surgeon in charge. I said that nobody is in charge. Uh, they come when they are the the surgeon which is available who is available come to perform the the procedure because they are trained in a similar manner <laughs> so just a moment wait so we put the stitch and now you see that if i carry out the knot the shaved area will be pushed into <coughs> the rectum. That's why it is important not to do it right now, but to do it once the <coughs> circular stapler is into the rectum. Okay? So I wait for the... Let, let it down. Coupe uh, moi le nez, s'il vous plaît. L'aiguille. Et donnez mon un euh, cocher. So, you see, if, if I do the knot, the shaved area will disappear into the rectum. But in this case, I will create an over stenosis. That's why I have to wait for my colorectal surgeon. He will push the, this is the next step of the surgery. He pushes the, uh, he pushes the EA stapler, circular EA stapler into the rectum. It opens the stapler and then I will do the knot to push inside the shaved area and then he will remove it. So we'll show you how we are doing this. Sortez moi le 33. <coughs> just, just yeah then 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 <coughs> so look at uh, look at the stapler this is the circular stapler so all the general surgeon know it because they use it routinely to carry out the colorectal resection okay so there is a distal shoulder and the proximal anvil so when you when you perform the correct resection the anvil will be put into the colon the shoulder into the rectum and then you will carry out the anastomosis while to do the disc excision we will push it into the rectum completely uh, closed and then close it please So let's say that this is the shaved area. So the, the stepper is pushed into the rectum. Now the colorectal surgeon mm. will open it. Me, I will push the shaved area inside like this. And then the colorectal Just surgeon casual. will close, will staple and he will remove the shaved area. Okay. And to do this, we use a large stapler. This mm. is the 33 millimeter diameter stapler. 
Okay, very well. Now, Ahmed, you can Should remove you can completely the mm -hmm. rectal probe. So you see. No. So you see. Uh, I prepared the lateral rectal wall to be stapled, so the stapler will close here. It will be far from the vessels. Here, maybe we have a vessel. I, I will coagulate it because hold, hold it, please. Because Bullshit. if it is coked into the stapler, it may result in uh, rectal rage. If you have a rectal rage, it means that the patient loses blood through the anus immediately after the surgery. I think that it's urgent not to do uh, anything else, to wait, uh, except it if the bleeding is very, very, very is major, one, li one liter or more, and uh, to wait for a spontaneous hemostasis because uh, if it does not uh, stop, we, you can carry out a, a coloscopy and to coagulate it, but coloscopy means inflating the rectum just after the anastomosis, so I think it's not uh, a very, very good idea. Okay, what can we do uh, expecting the colorectal surgeon? We can manage this, this lesion. Hold it, please. So, this lesion involves the anterior wall of the recto of the uterus, far from the far from the fallopian tube, but it involves the round ligament. So, we have to take care not to to remove a piece of the bladder inadvertently. We can remove it if the bladder is infiltrated, but not inadvertently. That's why I start by sectioning the peritoneum. Okay. So the bladder is far. It is here, you see. And we will remove... Hold the... Hold the Round ligament, yeah. And we have to sacrifice the round ligament. So the ureter is much, much lower. There's no risk to injury the ureter at this level. Now, here is very easy, but closer to the uterus, <laughs> we'll. Uh, will come in contact with the with the vessels so pince griffe so i will try to resect as superficially as superficial as i can put the put this but do not hold the the fallopian tube it is very important So our our friend colorectal surgeon, Dr. Forestier is here. It is the same colorectal surgeon uh, uh, as last year. So he carried out his a very experienced specialist of the disc excision. He can do it uh, with closed eyes, but it's not very recommended. So I will ask him to open them. Yeah. <coughs> okay, we can see your hand. So we'll finish this until he scrubs the hands. Or is that adhesion or a uh, nodule, huh? I think it is a nodule, but it it's continues with uh, with uh, uh, the adenomyosis. So I think that is it is not 
uh, it is not possible to remove it completely because from, uh, from here in the death there is adenomyosis but I will resect it without uh, expecting to be uh, in, in com completely in, uh, in sano uh, bipolar bipolar so I will coagulate uh, this and then we will go on the, on the rectum Blood. Blood. <laughs> okay, very well. Now, Ahmed will leave his place and uh, between the legs we'll have uh, our friend uh, Damien. So, He's holding the, the stapler and he will show you once more that he'll open the stapler into the rectum. I will carry out the knot pushing the shaved area into the stapler and then he will close. And we'll see that we'll, we'll remove a piece of tissue looking like a calzone, you know the, the pizza which is closed. And when we, when we uh, remove the staplers, we'll have uh, disc ex the actual disc excision. Now, uh, Jamil, le let it down. This is not the, the emergency, no? So now, he puts once more, he puts the stapler into the rectum, and now he will completely close it. The stapler is below the nodule, and now he will he will close he will open. Okay, and you see how the shaved area is placed into uh -huh. the anvil and the shoulder. And now this is a is a moment for me to go to the next step, which is the knot. So I will carry out the knot. I use a extra corporal technique. And you see how the shaved area is pushed into the rectum. A second one. Very well. Now we'll cut the stitch. And I will take two needle holder and now which is very important that the shoulder to be placed on contact with the inferior limit like this and now the anvil will close and Jamil will avoid that the sigmoid goes uh, the upper rectum goes uh, completely into the stapler like this and at this moment, my colleague will antiverse the, the stapler in order to avoid to catch also the posterior rectal wall. Okay, so you can see that everything is inside because here the rectum is completely normal. Here, here is what I, this is not endometrial, this is what I coagulate, it's a vessel. Okay, so you can close my friend so he's closing the stapler it is recommended to wait 10 to 15 uh, seconds to improve the hemostasis that's what we are doing And then he will open the stapler and he will remove the stapler with the piece into the stapler. And you see we have a 
suture, very well done, suture of the anterior rectal wall. Very, very, very important, this kind of suture never led to stenosis, never. It, have never hap it has never happened in more than 290 cases. Because it is only semicircular, while when you carry out a colorectal resection, you have a risk of uh, stenosis, and I demonstrated it. Uh, I demonstrated it into the um, in the endorandomized trial. There is a risk of stenosis of about eight to ten percent. No risk with the disc excision. And now we'll test. We'll test. Uh, the suture, they want to show you the pieces we removed. Okay, so the suture is six centimeter above the annulus, so it is a mid low rectum. And we removed a piece of four centimeter in diameter. Bro. Now, he will push air into the rectum and we'll do the bubble test. We see whether or not we have bubbles. No bubble. Now the question is, should we or should we not do a stoma? So in Rouen, when I was in Rouen, the question was rather yes, while here we observed that, uh, uh, show me all the nodules, the, all, all the pieces you have here, bring them to show everything we removed in uh, this young patient. So here we are less likely to carry out the stoma and we, but, so this is the vagina, you see, it's a big uh -huh. three centimeter vagina. This is the parametrium and this is the rectal patch. So together, result in the rectovaginal nodule we removed. Train, s'il te plaît. Salondan soru var mı efendim? Sorry? So wait a second, I, I'm just asking the audience a question or not. Mm. So in, in Bordeaux we decided not to carry out stoma because when you carry out a stoma, you have a 8% risk of complications, clavian 3B complications related directly and specifically to the stoma. So we decided not to, not to uh, perform the stoma, but we check the white cells and uh, the C-reactive protein uh, during the during one week after uh, the um, the procedure, uh, not in the hospital, outside, uh, and we uh, we are very likely to perform a second laparoscopy if the C-reactive protein increases after the day four. So from the day four, the C-reactive protein should decrease and should be close to uh, 20 while a C-reactive protein superior to 100 uh, this is a normal piece of the this is the, the piece of the, the, from the rectum so if the C-reactive protein is superior to 100 uh, uh, the day 4 this is likely that you uh, you have to do a scan and the laparoscopy because uh, you have either an abscess or a fistula well, uh, I so think I uh, horse there is yes. Horse, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful surgery. Thank you for everything. So there's a question in the audience. So I'm gonna translate you. Yes. Uh, is there any? I mean, in terms of the discoid uh, resection, is there any limit uh, in terms of the the diameter of the nodule or the the I mean, in the length of the the part of uh, sigmoid you removed in? Uh, the question is yes so um, we can 
we can uh, carry out disc excision until six centimeter. But we are more uh, performant in large disc excision when the low rectal is re rectum is involved because we have a second technique, which is the Rouen technique, using a semicircular stapler. And with this semicircular stapler, we can remove patches as large as six to seven centimeter in, in diameter. So the, the size is not actually a problem. If the rectal nodule is associated with a sigmoid colon nodule, we try to avoid to carry out a long, thank you, Damian, see you. Uh, we avoid a long, low colorectal resection from here to there, and we try to carry out a disc excision here and a short segmental resection here. So what we call combined disc excision and segmental resection of the sigmoid, and we try to preserve the seven or 10 centimeter of healthy rectum between the two nodules so we manage so uh, horse yes yeah yeah it's very real thank you so uh, we are almost ending and i think you you complete the surgery i think yeah and uh it was really um interesting for us to see for all the audience to see the f i think the most of the people here saw the hypogastric nerve dissection of the hypogastric nerve and yeah, it's so you're yes, showing us. <laughs> and also the most of the people here, I'm the surgeon here, show the discoitus action. So we're not familiar in Turkey with the discoitus action. We are not doing the discoitus action. So I'm also happy, very happy to see the, the surgery, I mean discoitus action. So uh, is there any the last things that you're going to um, transmit us? We're going to end of the live surgery. Yeah. So if you do not have a uh, over question, I would like to, no, we don't have. to, to, to thank you very much for, uh, for your nice invitation. And uh, last, uh, last year, I felt very, very, very well in uh, Istanbul. And uh, I feel your... Uh, yeah, we miss you, my friend. Really, really missing you. And yes, uh, so you, you're always good friend of us, and you're always good surgeon, you're always good. And I know how you uh, feel in keeping your family, and we wish you health and for your family and uh, beautiful daughters. <laughs> And and also wish to see you soon, as soon as possible. Tomorrow we're gonna launch the club Mediterranean of endoscopy, yeah. here, and we're gonna we're gonna plan uh, with the guys in Greece, in Italy, in Morocco, and others, and the the workshops. I'm gonna um, write uh, as soon as possible uh, to the uh, the meeting in uh, minutes. Uh, we are planning to have a workshop in. Uh, your city to visit you yes. uh, as the member of the club Mediterranean of uh, gynecologic endoscopy and so thank you for everything thank you really so cordially thank you, thank you. Uh, you're always welcome in Bordeaux any 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 when you wish thank you very much and see thank you, you uh, and hear you uh, Friday all right bye 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 my photo a photo please go on the one 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 the button the button one no okay photo and stop recording stop recording no stop rec uh, recording <laughs>